commentary YouTube is divided into six sections. The work left. Transphobia is misogyny. The work right. I don't think women should vote. Conservative right wing. What is a woman? Left is who the left is leaving. You and I, who used to be on the left, are now like, where's the left? You're out of your mind. You're, 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 you're chopping f***s off. Channels like mine, who are just here for the food. And finally, Dr. Jordan Peterson, because... The overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that? Man's in a class of his own. All of right-wing YouTube almost universally agree with these three concepts. And well, they're wrong. It is important to note that whilst they all agree or at least don't disagree with these, the reason or intent behind their approval is very different. I'll explain further on that, but before we get into it, you're welcome to my army of armed soldiers where we talk about the deep truths people tend to miss. To join us, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss another episode of a Nigeria Take with Theo. And whilst you're at it, like and share this video. So, topic one is actually trad wives, but I have a lot more to say about that one, so let's move that to later. But next up is... College! <laughs> Notice that I actually use the term wrong, because it's not that I disagree, it's that they're actually wrong. And you might say, wow, Dio is so presumptuous, how could you possibly know that? Well, because I'm Nigerian, and it's my reality. I'm the proof of their wrongness. Anyway, let's get into it. There's this wave of don't go to college because it's an expensive waste of time videos from right-wing YouTube, and I don't necessarily disagree. But there's a counter-argument that I doubt anyone else has presented to this. Initially, I had way more counter-arguments about it, but I decided to take my time and flesh them out so I don't end up sounding like an utter idiot. And I'm so glad I did, because shortly after, Brett Cooper posted this video where she made some excellent points and provided alternatives to college that pretty much destroyed most of my counter-arguments. We have been lying to young people about their futures, saying you only have one path and it's college. Most, not all. I'll link that video down below. So, I do agree with most of the talking points, $300,000 debt for a worthless piece of paper you will earn peanuts or even nothing from is a mathematical disaster and outright fraud. Although, what's wrong here is the premise that people even know or understand what they want in the first place. See, in Nigeria we have the same problem, but the difference is, a university certificate doesn't cost an arm and a leg here, it's largely subsidised by our government. When Brett talks about these alternatives like community college or even starting a business, you know what you can do? You can go to a state school, you can go to community college, you can also just not go to college, save your money. She leaves out two extremely important things. The first is the human proclivity towards status and prestige, and the second is the tendency for those alternatives themselves to become what universities are today. An overcrowded, expensive hub where degrees are sold. See, things like universities and big pharma did not happen overnight. They started out normal as a way to educate and set a standard for professionalism, a universal approval of your expertise in a specific field. But thanks to that proclivity for prestige in humans, voila, here we are. So, Brett's recommendations, while they are sensible and noble, doesn't scale. In other words, common sense is not common, and when it becomes common, the sense leaves. People feel somewhat lost when there is no shiny, unattainable thing to go after, and structures like colleges and universities fulfill that need. If you take them out, something else will take its place, and maybe something far worse. So, even if the system appears to be broken, it's not. It's working exactly as humans like it. It's great that you can reason the way you do, but... That is just not most people. Plus, I doubt it can ever be. So if people did decide to take right-wing YouTube and online money-making YouTube's anti-college advice, two things will happen. One, sure they won't land in debt, but they likely will land in another type of fix because their mind doesn't work the same way those who have advised them does. Two, if it gets popular enough, the recommended alternatives will themselves become exactly like Ivy League colleges due to demand. Next up is Passport Bros. This one's more popular on the woke right, but conservative right does use it in talking points against feminism. Obviously, they're running away. Women caused this. You cannot scream at men and say that they are the worst thing that ever happened to the entire world while still wanting a relationship with one of them. And you're not going to get it when you treat them that way. That's why they are all leaving. Women in these other countries are raised to be more traditional. And in America, we're in the middle of a dumpster fire. See, the first problem with this take is she says women caused this. 
Yes, I know, there are a lot of problems with attitude towards men from Western women, but putting the blame on one gender sounds just as woke as feminists blaming the patriarchy for everything. It also underplays the role that men did play in the past and honestly are still playing today, which resulted in a lot of this current behaviour from women. Sure, there's been a lot of brainwashing by the media and the government, but ask yourself, why did feminism become so appealing to women in the first place? Oh, I gotta think about this one. To better understand what I mean, let's put it in a modern context. Why do you think Red Pill Logic is appealing to so many men online right now? Please, pause the video, rewind, and reflect on that. If you've answered my questions, you will understand this next point even better. I get it. It fits into the trendy narrative that modern women are difficult to deal with, which is mostly true, but conservative YouTube must be careful not to end up creating a cover for bare minimum effort men or toxic men that are simply not accountable. Men who believe that providing financially is all they should bring to a marriage. Watch this. I can cook, I can clean. Uh, see, this is why I came to Thailand, to find a traditional woman. See, in the United States, women don't cook and cook. All they do is complaint. And we don't have time for that. That's why I got my passport. On the surface, that doesn't look bad. He's just a guy who wants a clean home, a hot meal, and some peace. But as a Nigerian, I can tell you, this might well be another man who doesn't like to be challenged at all and has now found a woman who has low enough standards to not do that. I'm not saying it's the case here, but it's one possibility that is far more likely than the beauty right-wing YouTube often chooses to see. I've been going on and on about the men, but what about the women? I think that you can find higher quality women in other places. I think that we should learn from the women overseas instead of whining that they're leaving. Why don't we ask why they're leaving and maybe try to model some of the stuff. Still on the topic of low standards, as a non-Western woman myself, perhaps I can offer more of an insight into us, the much coveted foreign traditional woman. Last year, a friend of mine almost married a passport bro, but we found out he murdered two of his ex-girlfriends. However, before that, she had already caught him cheating multiple times and she was still willing to marry a serial cheat. See? Low standards. I wish I could say it was just a her thing, but I'd be lying. We're literally groomed to believe that men can do as they please with women. The most important thing is that he is providing. We tend to raise good wives and bad moms. Bad moms in the sense that that man-worshipping mentality sips into parenting, forming something you might know as a boy mom. These moms raise entitled sons who will make terrible husbands and boyfriends. Cooking and cleaning is great. Men do love a caring woman, but what lies behind the scenes? I have friends in Latin and Asian countries who claim that the pattern of our boys are raised compared with girls in their countries is just as dismal as mine, but I won't be speaking for them since I am not from there. I will tell you the truth about Africans, however. Many of these women see the men as a means to escape, and they will accept poor treatment from the passport bros if that is the price to pay. So, you're either ending up with a gold digger or a low self-worth woman who is not really willing to build her character. And believe it or not, once you're over the lure of cooking and cleaning, you will find that such a woman is not the best type of partner as she doesn't offer you much substance. Basically, Passport Bros is a potential matchup for low accountability men and desperate low self-worth women. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's always the case though. There are a lot of good women and men, and sure, you could find true love. It's just, this is the side that right-wing YouTube fails to put forward because they place this traditional woman thing on a pedestal. Although, I don't really blame them for that because they're no longer surrounded by the trad wife lifestyle like I am. So it's easy to forget the flaws, most of which I haven't even mentioned in this video because I'd like to keep it short. On that note, let's talk about trad wives. The response to trad wives by some right-wing YouTubers is pretty, uh, liberal. This sounds so lib, like... They talk about things like choice and happiness. I'm so afraid of these trad wives because their lifestyle is appealing to women. I don't know, I thought feminism was supposed to be about giving women the freedom and direction to choose what they want to do with their lives. Isn't that what we want for women now? From even a feminist perspective, don't you want women to be happy choosing the path that's right for them? And sometimes that path is tradition. The only problem with that logic is that is precisely what liberals have always pushed. And now so many people are filled with such joy. It's contagious. I feel joy hanging out with my dog, going on walks, 
so much joy. So it's a pretty lazy argument. I thought conservatives especially ought to know that some things are really not about individual choice, but instead about what scales for the greater good of society. But let's take a look at Tradwives from a man's POV. I think it's quite inspiring, and I, in fact I know it because I talk to people who have, who have been inspired by this idea of tradition, you know, being a trad wife. And Babe, do you really want to work? What do you want out of life? She says, I just want to be a housewife. Mm. And I'm, well, in so many words. And I'm like, good, because <laughs> that's what I like. Great. Men are happy with it. Of course they are. I'll explain some dark sides to that happiness even they don't realize in a bit. But first watch the point Matt Walsh makes here. My only objection really to the trad wife trend is that we're calling it a trend. And I wouldn't really call it a lifestyle either, but rather um, a system that works for us, just as it has worked for the majority of families all over the world. Now this I can work with. Someone who rather than making generic borderline woke arguments actually proposes that the trad wife system works and has always worked. But has it? Really? Back to the men. On one hand, men want to take on the role of provider for their family, and that's a great thing. On the other hand, this traditional system is heavily hinged on something that most people just don't possess. Virtue. The online face of trad wife will tell you herself. And I cannot stress this enough. You have to marry the right man. If you marry a guy who in your dating life, he showed abusive and control tendencies, this is a disaster waiting to happen because when you become financially dependent on this man, he will abuse all of that. Let's face it, even if men will never admit this, having another person solely dependent on you financially corrupts the mind. It gives a false sense of overimportance. False because it's actually you just carrying out your responsibility and the dependent spouse is bringing something equally as important to the table. But nope. A lot of men will not see it this way. Most men will claim to see the importance of the woman's task at first, and some of them even genuinely do, but the temptation to bend to the God complex becomes pretty strong down the line. And I think most people underestimate and underappreciate their housewife. Like, dude, the housewife, nine times out of ten, is the one running shit. Let me tell you something about men and women. Men, because of their traditional protector-provider traits, are inclined to be more adventurous and explorative than women. The downside to that is it becomes very easy to be individualistic and use other people like objects. Women, on the other hand, are typically more safe and stable in their thinking. Comfort and security are the most sought after things. As a result, it becomes very easy to be lazy brained and settle. That's why I always advocate for teaching boys self-control and teaching girls self-worth. Yes. Feminists' intentions may be ill, misguided, and coming from a place of being triggered by women choosing to still be feminine after their efforts to normalize an unnatural dynamic between men and women. But somewhere buried deep down under, they have a shiny good point. Tradwife could work, but it has also failed woefully on practically every continent. As a Nigerian, I can proudly tell you that my people have good traditional values, but I know for a fact that years from now, the traditional wife dynamic will be all but gone. Not because of any Western ideology, but because of how girls have seen what monsters it turns their fathers into and what shit accepting simps it turns their mothers into. Conservatives tend to put these things on a pedestal based on its potential to work, given you have two virtuous people in the marriage, but not on the actual practicality of it. It's great that you're virtuous and all, but look around you, bloody hell. We have proof of what money turns even the best of men into. The top 1% of men playing around with multiple women is literally an endless talking point on YouTube. They leverage their access because they can. I mean, why aren't majority of them choosing not to treat women as objects for pleasure? Furthermore, men subconsciously find it easier to underestimate these points I'm making because it's women who bear most of the risk if things go south. The said woman is at the mercy of the said man. Just like pregnancy, a man could completely remove himself, but a woman must go through it. Even if you get an abortion, you're still going to go through stuff physically. Check out this tweet by Matt Walsh. All a man wants is to come home from a long day at work to a grateful wife and children who are glad to see him and dinner cooking on the stove. This is literally all it takes to make a man happy. We are simple, give us this and you have given us nearly everything we need. This is so false and underplayed, but that's a topic for another day. So let's say it's reasonable for the sake of today. He talks about what men want, not what they need. 
Men and women need a relationship structure that fosters fairness for both genders, and I cannot in good conscience endorse a system we have proof often falls short of that. I am curious, though, what system you, my viewers, recommend that may work better than the stay-at-home trad wife thing. Sound off below, and I too will share some of my recommendations in the comments. Personally, I do not put it on men to fully understand or prioritize the stakes for women in general in this trad wife topic, which is why it's slightly disappointing to watch the conservatives of my gender make such surface airhead arguments. Right-wing YouTube must be careful not to fall into the trap of unchallenged repetitive talking points that suit a narrative rather than critical thinking and hardball analysis. Which is why, even if these hosts make some good points on these topics, it is important to consider these not-so-spoken-about aspects. My name is Dio, and thank you for watching. Guys, like I always say, I may be completely wrong, but if you agree, you disagree, leave a comment below and I will see you on the next one. Odabo.